we take in baby Titan with us. So. Yeah, little Titan's going to walk his first red carpet. He doesn't get to see the movie, but he at least gets to walk the red carpet and stuff. Hey, I have never walked the red carpet in my life yet, like, not for a movie, so he's going to step ahead of me for sure. <laughs> That's awesome. He's going to be so happy. Yeah, Star Titan. All right. That's All right. Sure. You out of here? Yeah, pretty much done with you. All right. I gotta go, go get, get, get yeah. Todd. Dolled up what and ready. What are you ready. guys going to discuss here today? We got some important topics coming up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm uh, have some information looking forward for to hear all of it. So <laughs> I know with the excitement of this and everything, the one thing I like about you, one of the main things is that you are a, no matter what comes up, um, you're already moving forward going, hey, this is a speed bump, whatever this is, and let's keep moving forward, keep getting the very best we can. Uh, and that's, yep. if you really want to make it through life and be a success, that's got to be the attitude. Um, and sure. I know that, uh, I guess it was last week, we, we were getting this information from attorneys talking about the FDA coming in and stuff. Can you explain kind of what's going on in the health and fit? I mean, I this, this really is health, yeah. the health world. Sure. What is going on with, with these uh the FDA, the peptides, what's their, what's their angle sure. here? Sure. So, all right. Obviously peptides are a big thing. Peptides have helped a lot of people out there, right? Um, they're not narcotics. They're not controlled substances. So many different things from healing to, you know, sexual to weight loss to extending life, right? And telomeres and much, much more with, with peptides. And, uh, you know, it just came out of left field last week where the FDA decided that they were going to schedule majority of the beneficial peptides to a schedule two rating. And what does that mean? So the FDA has three schedules. They have the first step, which is schedule one. And that is what they're currently looking at to see if there's any medical necessity or use um, that complies with them to be able to use it. Right. Compounding pharmacies to compound. Then there's step two, schedule two. And this is a schedule where they just put all these peptides on. And schedule two basically says that there's not more medical use. Basically, there's more risk than uh, benefit to using these things. And it had the reasoning for every single peptide on there of why they thought it was unsafe to use. And every one had the exact same thing as far as the reasoning, which makes no sense because they're not all the same. They don't do the exact same thing. So, you know, it just kind of hit us out of left field. And at that point, schedule three is something that there's, they're totally unsafe and can't use and we don't utilize anything on schedule three but the peptides that went on schedule two i mean obviously you know these are a big thing that a lot of people utilize um and like i said i don't the the, the angle from the fda is this they hit us around our left field so nobody knew no clinics no pharmacies no lawyers so at that point when the fda did this it kind of like like what, what the hell is going on here but the truth about it is i mean is a big pharma and the lobbyist you know, because at that point, there's some different peptides out there that can extend life or do some different healing things or even aid in weight loss that maybe they don't want us to have. Um, you know, for this, I don't understand why the FDA went. Go ahead. I, I'm, I'm slightly confused because I've never heard anything uh, from the world of health and wellness that peptides were something bad because mostly because they're uh, just a lineup of amino acids where SARMs. SARMs, I've heard, is bad. And is this a scheduled two as well? Because from what I understand, you can still get SARMs. You can still get SARMs. Select energy receptor modulators, which are a lot worse. They have a lot more negative effects on people and their health altogether. And you hear that there's there's side effects. For sure, 100%. Like we know that what we've done on blood tests with, with people, especially younger guys that are taking SARMs, one, shuts down natural production. Two, liver toxicity. Those were the big things that we seen from people that are taking SARMs to come into Titan Medical Center. And that was the farthest thing of what they wanted as a younger person. They wanted not to take testosterone to get all the benefits. They thought they could do that. But in the process, it shut down their natural function. And, uh, you know, so they have to do something to recharge their testicles or get on something that's going to replace their levels to where they're at, which is a downside. And like I said, peptides are just amino acid sequences. Now, listen. I could totally understand if the FDA said, you know what, growth hormone peptides, this could possibly cause cancer in somebody. It could, it could. If you, you know, if you're growing all the cells, you can't pick which cell it's going to grow. It could have possibly do that for somebody, especially if, 
you know, you have the genetics and maybe former, um, you know, family members that have had it. that are close to your father, grandfather, mother, whoever it is. But, you know, like BBC 157, TV 500. I mean, BBC 157 is like uh, isolation of the gastric juices in your stomach. So, I mean, it's pretty well known to the body. So there's not like something that's completely foreign. Um, I don't know. You know, my big problem is with this is that, all right, cool. You want to regulate peptides? Great. Let's go after people that are doing illegal things. They're not getting prescription peptides. They're going to research chemical sites. These research chemical sites are thriving. And when this went into play, I know two owners of those sites. And man, they are jumping for joy right now because orders are coming in oh, left yeah. and right. People know that the band is going to be there. and They're not going to get in prescription wise in the near future. Now, if I were somebody and you got peptide therapy through us at Titan or somewhere else and you really want to get peptide therapy, I would order now because the pharmacies at this point, the compound pharmacies have a stock of what they have and they have powders that they can do. But after they're done with those powders and that stock, it's gone. You're, it's done. They won't be able to get new powders to compound. And if they do, the FDA didn't say it's illegal to do it, but they said that regulation could happen. So at that point, they could come in and slap you on the wrist or do whatever they want. But it, it's, not in, it's not a black and white thing that says, you can't compound this. They're saying that it is unsafe that we think. And if you do compound it, we may come visit you. So, you know, pharmacies, they don't really want to deal with the FDA. Clinics definitely don't want to deal with the FDA. But yeah. the clinics and the pharmacies are banding together because, like I said, this came out of left field. And obviously, there's a lot of people that benefit from peptides. And there's clinics out there that, you know, that's a majority of their business. And pharmacies, they do a lot of business in peptides too as well. So at that point, you know, that could be a sinking ship for a lot of places out there because they solely depended on peptides, which is not a smart move because, listen, me being in this business for 11 years, I've learned one thing. You better be able to adapt because there are so many different things that have changed in the 11 years since I've been in this business, regulation-wise, products being taken off the market, presented back on the market. So you never know what's really going to happen. Um, and it just, it sucks that, you know, like the FDA wants to overregulate on something like this, like I said, because... Um, it's doing damage to a lot of people because they get a lot of benefits from peptide therapy. And now you're going to push everybody back into the black market. And that is the big safety concern to me. So that's what it, I mean, it seems like that's the biggest thing here. It's like, okay, well, if they're going to shut it down with people that are actually monitoring their blood work, monitoring their right. health, and right. you got the doctors looking at this stuff and they say, okay, no more of this. They're instantly going to go to, right back to the black market when this kind of stuff really came out and expense wise right. it seems pretty real and inexpensive i guess you would say through the black sure. market now well, i don't the, know what you're getting in that sense but yeah. at the same time if people is getting results from this stuff they're going to yeah. continue to do it of course of course and you know the thing about it is, is that you know the reason that peptides are more expensive to let's say a pharmacy compared to somebody on the black market or research chemical sides, gray area, whatever you want to call it, is that the pharmacies are actually doing testing on these products. So they're getting the pedigree to said it's for human use. That's one thing, not just research use, because that's the other pedigree that a lot of places get. And the second thing is they have to do endotoxin testing, sterility testing. So you, you can show a patient, listen, this is 100% pure. There's nothing in here that's bad, and it's going to be safe for you to use. Through a research chemical site, you're not getting that. And that's why they can charge... $40 or $50 for a bottle of BPC. They get these bottles already pre-made, right? From China, India, wherever it's at. And then they just, you know, they just distribute them out. They're not testing yeah. these things yeah. or anything like that. So it's a lot cheaper. They buy it for five, 10 bucks. They sell for 40, 50 bucks. They're getting a good return on things, but you have no idea what you're getting. That's the wow. Problem. Are you guys getting overloaded with phone calls right now? People trying to get as much as they can for their their stockpile, I guess you would say, uh, before yeah. the so, shutdown. The way, yeah, the way that it's going right now, obviously people are hitting us up left and right. I mean, I'm a big I'm a big user of BBC one five seven TV five hundred guys. I'm a huge believer in it. It's helped me so much. Um, you know, and there's a lot of patients that want to do that. So, you know, obviously everybody's on that page of let's stockpile as much as possible. The pharmacies know this, so they are limiting us to what we can do for each patient but they're talking about five to six months right away that a patient can buy. And I would recommend doing that to anybody out there. If you really want to get these peptides that you know are coming from a legitimate source that are tested, that you know are going to work. 
for sure, 100%. Because you can go buy a bottle of $50 BPC 157. It might work, might not. You have no idea what you're going to inject. But here, at least you know, and you'll have some sort of stock. I mean, whether it's five or six months, and you never know. Like I said, yeah. if enough people uproar about these things, then the FDA could flip it back. You know, they could flip a couple products back. They don't have to flip all of them back. But right. I mean, they put every single one that's beneficial in that list. <laughs> it's just, it's crazy. And so I, I was speaking about this and other things that were like Kratom was something that yep. was, you were talking about, it was banned at a certain yep. time. Now I know that you can't, in some states you can't, the California is always one of those states. Yeah. You can't even get yeah. DHEA sent to California, yeah. but it's like, um, I know Kratom was shut down and then it came back yeah. around to being uh, legal again. But it, it seems like that one always has ups and downs. But the research yeah. on it, again, um, shows benefits for people, certain people. 100%. So what does this mean for uh, the HRT companies and, and, and putting out real stuff. Yeah. Is so there a way you know, that they can get this to, to uprise against the FDA? Cause I, I, nobody beats against the government, which well, most I mean, of the time you know, money, money speaks volumes. In this case, money is money is key. And remember you got big pharma has billions of dollars and lobbyists. They don't want some of these things on the market because they do help people and they will not take some of these drugs that they might have to extend use with, right? They might have to take other drugs just to get the benefit of what they're getting from some of these peptides. So at that point, like I said, it's got to be a huge uproar. There's got to be a lot of money thrown at it and a lot of people. Um, if you do that, then they will have to do it. I mean, just like what happened with the telemedicine laws and everything like that, they were going to do something and there was enough uproar by doctors and patients that at that point they flipped the script and they're changing and they've extended that out now. So if enough, I, I, honestly, it really lies to the doctors and the doctors should be on the forefront of these things, not the pharmacies, not the patients. I mean, the patients should be there too. It should be yeah. it should go doctors, providers, patients, pharmacies, your provider, because you know what? He's seeing the patients get the results. He's helping this patient heal, seeing this patient get a better quality of life. Two, the patients are feeling it. They've took the products, right. the therapies. They've felt the quality of life. They felt the improvement. They felt the the you know the recovery or whatever it may be that they're trying to get from the peptide. So that should be the second one. And the third one, the pharmacies. The pharmacies, obviously, it's a big business for them. Um, so at that point, if they want to be able to distribute out to these clinics, then they better get their ass in there and, and start doing something. I mean, I know that I have before because – Listen, the FDA and everything has tried to close down compounding pharmacies before. They have literally went and they said, listen, we don't see this. And big pharmacies like Walgreens, CVS, and all these places, they don't like compounding pharmacies either. The reason com compound pharmacies will be able to stay around forever is because two things, major points. One, if there's ever shortages on drugs, that's where compound pharmacies can compound those products and get the products out to people. Okay? Two, Transportation rates can be different. That means the way that it gets in the body. Some people can do injectable. Some people can do sublingual. You can do a trochee. You can do, you know, up the butt, you know, whatever you want. I mean, as far as that goes. Um, so those are big two reasons why those, those compounding pharmacies will always stay around. But limiting products of what they can compound might be in the future for some of these pharmacies. So, um, you know, for these places out there, the HRT clinics, I don't know, I don't know what to say. You better adapt. I mean, I, yeah. I'm telling you, I've had to adapt over a lot of different things. Um, two major peptides that they'll never be able to take away because your FDA approved is Semarellin. That's a GHRH peptide that was supposed to get rid of growth hormone. It's an old one, but you know what? That's going to be the only thing in the tool belt. And uh, PT-141. Tirzepatide, semiglutide, those are peptides too, and those are FDA approved. So those aren't going away. So weight loss are going to be good. PT-141 for libido and drive. And then for... Any GHRH peptide, you're going to have to go to Summerlin for right now. Now, on the back end, I know pharmacies have been talking to suppliers and these chemists. Um, they're trying to get things together where they can change the molecular structure so they're not banned substances and be right around kind of similar products. I think that's going to be awesome, and I think they're getting on that right now because obviously yeah. taking away, and I'm just guesstimating right now, at least 12 to 15 products from a pharmacy that are peptide-driven is going to be a big hit. It's going to be a big, big hit on them. So they're going to have to replace that revenue some way. So they're going to have to either come out with good products or therapies different that can work for patients, 
or they're going to be screwed. The biggest thing about this is it might, it might start dimin diminishing some of the places that are out there. So you have yeah. a whole bunch of places that when COVID hit and the big HRT and telemedicine laws went in a place where they could service anybody and not need licensing in the different states, everybody jumped on this, on this bandwagon. Yeah. And then they thought, oh, we'll just stay on this bandwagon. Now this is going to start leaning some of these people out, these fly-by-nights, and some people are a little bit smaller because they don't have the business. They don't know what to do. Uh, luckily for us, I mean, listen, I thought about this a long time ago. I've got Hercules Potion, Titan Complete. I've got different blends that nobody else has in the country. So... You know, those are things that are just a business on its own. Um, yeah. HRT is always going to be around. They're never going to yep. get rid of testosterone, hopefully, because one, us guys need it. And most guys that are doing the legislature need it, too. And then two, what are they going to do? The people that don't need it or on the other side of the, the fence. They're going to need it for transitioning. They want to transition from a woman to a man. Testosterone is always going to have to be around. Hormones are always going to play a part. So, um, you know, I don't see HRT getting diminished, but, um, you know, peptides you know, it's it's a sad day as far as that goes it seems so it's fishy to me it's like i know that when the locks down the lockdown happened it's like okay then this whole telemedicine kind of opened up really opened yep. up and then uh, they opened up shop again and go oh well we don't like that uh let's shut that back down and make sure that you go visit and, and it's like yeah okay <laughs> and then now it's amino acids in this sense because that's basically yeah. a continuous of what peptides are amino acids how can they take something that's i mean we take branch chains we take all these what was the difference between those amino acids and what we're talking about when it comes to peptides so some of these different amino acid sequences were long chains longer than nine sequence amino acids they do not like that they do not like it more i don't know why they haven't gave a reason why there's no reasoning out there i could even think of because orally i could put a sequence of these things together no problem some over the counter no nobody's going to come regulate or say hey you're doing wrong there at all but if you have an injectable that's going to be a problem the other thing i seen was was on schedule one if you look on the fda sheet and these are things that are currently evaluating nad glutathione l-theanine l-arginine you're talking about some real basic things now yeah. So if they get rid of those in compound, the only way that you'll be able to get those things is over the counter or oral form. So, I so mean, L carnitine is okay as long as it's a tablet, not a injectable. That's right. That's and then right. glutathione and is one of the biggest talks about right now yeah. about yeah. healthy heart, uh, healthy body. Of course. And of course. and and they're going to pull that off of there as well. Which the next thing that will affect if they do do that, Mike is it will affect the IV business. All IVs, NAD, glutathione, l -thine. I mean, these are these are basic compounds. The only thing that they'll be able to do through IVs is like biotin, maybe vitamin C, some zinc, essential minerals. I mean, there's some things they'll still be able to do, but you're going to take away a lot of the tool belt as far as that goes if those Schedule 1s get put up to a Schedule 2 class. So hopefully they, they won't do anything stupid as far as that goes, but I'm telling hey, you, if man. anybody is out there and they're watching this and, and you can you can uh, share some knowledge on to me, at least on why this would come about. Um, this seems so odd to me and really coming out of the uh, left field as quick as they did to do this mm -hmm. uh, is very mm -hmm. interesting to me. Um, Jeffrey, yeah. do we got any questions from these guys right now. Oh, we're killing it. And again, anybody and everybody here, feel free to ask questions. Yeah, so what are good ways to strengthen flush blood into my lower back? Uh, I strained it. I know, they love that. They love that one, Mike. Go for that one, uh, Johnny, right here. Getting blood into that lower back. What are good ways to strengthen back. flush blood into my lower back? I strained it marsh. Okay, so um, to put blood in back into the lower back, that would be more of a vasodilator situation there, I would think, um, to create more blood flow. And I would definitely go with Hercules Potion for that, um, which is essentially packed with nine different things from glutamine for recovery, arginine, L-citrulline, proline, taurine, NAC, L-carnitine, um, and lysine too as well. So um, there's a lot of bang for the buck there. And it should definitely help with blood going to the lower back. And what I would do is, is I would try to get a hold of BBC and TB500 through, through us as quick as possible, because that could start helping the strains or maybe some different issues that you hurt, um, when you did this, this training. 
I, I feel like we're like the, the, the shopping network right now. It's like, right? hey, we got five minutes left. You guys at home, you women. And it's like, <laughs> no, but it's true. It, it's, it's, it's like, Listen, uh, I know that when I talked to you, I was like, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to get some BPs in for and sure. get this stuff in here um, and for jump sure. on I that. Mean, so I'm making the phone call. The, the number is right there for you guys down below. Yeah. But um, you know, my take on the lower I back is that I go for it again. No, I'm saying I haven't heard too much about it, like except for us, like talking about it right now. I know Rick Collins has brought some information out about it, but nobody has talked about this in the industry. I haven't heard any clinic voice up. I, I've seen one pharmacy send out one email. All the other pharmacies have been, unless I call them directly, wow. and I call the owner. As far as public coming out, so I don't know what's Why going is on. that. I don't know. Maybe they don't want to stir things up or stir problems, or they don't want to make people aware. I'm fully transparent and I always have been. Yeah. So, you know, what you see is what you get. And I want to let people know right away. And, you know, people, it's, it's, you know, when I contact people and I tell them stuff like this, because this happened with ACG before. Okay. It happened two years ago where ACG could be compounded. Well, 10 years ago, they made a regulation of law that said, Hey, listen, on this date, nobody's going to be able to compound ACG anymore unless you have a biological compounding license, which big pharma has. So at that point, compounding ATG was done. So I let patients know right away and they were buying a two years worth of ATG at a time because at that point, nobody was trying to let anybody know. And I just all of a sudden say, Hey, listen, it's gone off the market, but people can read wow. this for their own, for their own knowledge. They could go online. They could type in exactly what we're saying and read it for themselves. So it's not like I'm trying to do a sales pitch and say, you better buy now because you know what? We don't know when it's, it's guys. I don't lie. When I say things like this, I would get it while I can because who knows if it's ever going to come back and who knows how long the stash is going to be there for the pharmacy to be able to distribute out because once it's gone, it's gone and they're not going to be able to get powder. So there's no more compound. So it's going to be crazy. It's going to be real crazy. Jeff was talking, uh, Jeff's my guy here. He was talking about something that um, if he remembers correctly, uh, uh, Mark Bell and, and uh, yeah. Chris. Chris Bell yeah. kind of yeah. uh, brought up a, there was this documentary about kratom a leaf, of faith. Yep. a leaf of faith and and uh yep. kelly dunn if i'm correct is is the uh, producer of that and put that information out there and they did a whole movie about this product and i remember it got banned and then jeff was saying that those two really jumped on a bandwagon of trying to go um petition, petition i guess it was Oregon. right, right now and so they did put out a petition and had a hundred thousand signatures, Maybe. something something uh, great, mm -hmm. and that mm -hmm. helped reverse it. Um, so if there's something like that, hopefully enough people out there uh, do that to help out. And again, I think it goes back to the discussions that we've had over the weeks. Is there's great peptides for people that are uh, injured? Um, I get. Yep. You know, at the end of the day, it's like it's great having muscle. It's great being in shape. Right. But I think the, right. the, the pain aspect or, or injury aspect is such a big thing. And if mm -hmm. these people are doing these peptides and it is helping, what do they do when those peptides go away? Now what is their right. option? They go to pain right. medicines and goes back to right. the big pharma and, and then using right. what they have to offer or something worse like vicodin or something like that and then you go down that ugly road of course it just seems it seems like a yeah a money That's maker tough. for somebody out there yeah it is big pharma i mean obviously has a hand in this they really do they control the fda and a lot of the situations money talks it is what it is i mean so yeah i mean i, I haven't seen an official petition i was going to start with myself um but I mean, people are going to have to band together on this because if they want to see peptides stay around, then they're going to have to they're going to have to step up, and it's going to have to be documented too as well. I mean, you know, clinical studies, everything like this. Like, more doctors should be doing way more clinical studies on some of these peptides. There is a lot of information out there, but there could be a lot more. And if you have indisputable proof, and you can show an FDA or even big pharma and even sell it to them at that point, you don't know if they're going to shelf it or not, but. They would do something with it, I would think, if they could think they could get a whole bunch of money from it. But the study's got to be there, yeah, for sure. You know, uh, let's go back to the questions, Jeffrey. We got some, um, yeah, a bunch of people on IG are asking, How old do you have to be to get in touch with Titan Medical? 
what is the age for uh, a, a call to Titan Medical? Usually 21. So if you're 21 years old, you can call Titan Medical Center. We'll help you out. 21 and up. And let's keep going on that. For you guys at home, again, the number's right there. If you are using peptides um, and you did not hear about this uh, earlier, go for it. What do you think about inclined Smith? Smith machines are great. Johnny, you use you got a Smith machine off to your right yeah, right now. Yeah. It's kind of a yeah. cool Smith machine, too, because it kind of moves back yeah. and forth and up and down. Yeah. Is yeah, that correct? Yeah. So. Yeah, it, it moves motion for, for the joints. So a lot of people, it, you know, regular Smith machine just goes up and down. This will rotate and do whatever you want. So, you know, you're moving your shoulders, you're, you're going up, and it's not just, it's not putting you in a, I guess, an isolated position. Um, some people have injuries in their shoulders and stuff like that where this is really beneficial, and that's why I got it. Because it's super beneficial. You can move it all the way around. I mean, there's not much you can't do with it, which is really, really nice. I, I do think Smith machines do have a place. And especially if you don't have somebody there that's um, you're like a partner, like if you're trying to do some more heavier weight and you're worried about that bar falling on you, you know, it's a great thing to have a Smith machine because you can actually put the, the metal piece on the side where it's not going to come down and crash it on you, or you can lock it in real quick and uh, hopefully be a lot safer in your lifting. Um, yeah, I, I think they're great. You know, if you can get them, that, that's awesome. If not, you don't need it. It's not a necessity, but really good. Yeah. It, it seems like they always ask about Smith machine, like, like, uh, it's not a beneficial right. movement, but I think everything in the gym is beneficial. Well, Using a Smith machine, all like you just, yeah, you just named like five different things why it's it's beneficial. Um, go for yeah, it. Yeah, for sure, hundred percent. Well, my doctor prescribed me uh, BPC one five seven and CJC twelve ninety five for healing and repair. I'm a fifty five year old male. Are there any other better recommendations? Thank you. <laughs> well, my recommendation is. Um, that's great that your doctor recommended that and that's helped. Yeah. I, I, Johnny, yeah. go for it. I, I think, sure. uh, so get as much BPC 157, CJC 12, 1295, and TB 500 as much as you possibly can. Um, the other thing that I would possibly add in there, if you want to do something to really help healing or a recovery better, is going to be IGF 1, which I haven't heard about IGF 1 being on the band list yet. So we'll see. That was one that's went away, came back, went away, came back. So, it's not official though. I haven't seen it on schedule two or schedule three yet. So we'll see about that. But what I'd recommend is getting a hold of those peptides, BBC 157, TB 500, CJC 1295, and IGF-1. And um, I think you'd be good to, good to go. What does IGF-1 do for recovery? Did you hear that? Uh, Jeff was yeah, asking, what, is, what does IGF-1 do for recovery? Sure. So IGF-1, insulin like growth factor one. LR3 too, by the way, because there's two different ones. There's IGF-1 and there's IGF-1 LR3. The difference between the two is IGF-1 stays in your body a very short time period. IGF-1 LR3 is extended uh, as far as the half-life and your body working for longer. Uh, what IGF-1 does is, is um, when we go back to growth hormone, everybody talks about growth hormone for anti-aging, leaning out, gaining the muscle tissue, and so on as far as benefits. But the benefits come from where growth hormone is converted in the liver to IGF-1. And when it's converted to IGF-1, this is what the true benefits come from. Um, IGF-1 therapy is going to be great for hair, skin, nails, skin elasticity, uh, libido effect, every anti-aging thing you possibly think of. That's really IGF-1 comes into play. Um, so, you know, when you take IGF-1, it could help in a number of different ways from leaning out to building more lean tissue too as well, boosting immune function and so on and so on. So that's what IGF-1 does. IGF-1 is... In, in uh, layman's terms, when you're on growth hormone, you start at the beginning of the race and you have to run through the race and then you get to the finish line. Where IGF-1 is like, hey, listen, I started at the finish line. I go directly to, I started at the beginning. I go right directly to the finish line like that and everything in the middle, I just skip. So that's kind of the, the big benefit to it. Um, in IGF-1, you can stay on for like 60 to 90 days and then you want to, you know, you want to get off it for a little bit because you'll desensitize to it but it will help and it won't shut down natural production too as well. So that's another thing. Um, if you and, possibly want to go through a long, for long standing periods of time, you can do that. And from what you were saying now, if I am correct, are, are both those IGF ones not on the band's list? So, yeah. So the only one they're producing, the pharmacy producing IGF one LR three right now, that is not on the band list currently. And that could change. <laughs> right. Know, yeah. You know, right yeah. now. The way they did this. Right now it's, yeah. 
right now patients are, are able to get it and um, I'd recommend it for sure. I take it. So beneficial. Um, would this be something that you could use along with um, the Hercules potion prior to training and uh, possibly later in the day? Would that be a great mix of, of getting a better workout in? You want to talk about a pump? You combine those two together, man. You're going to get a serious pump. You can spot inject IGF-1 too as well, or you can take it subcutaneously in the stomach. That's Does that mean fine. like if I'm doing pump. arms, I can, I can do right into the bicep in that sense? Right in the bicep. I would recommend that. I'd recommend doing that. And then if you did it at night before bed, that's another good one. If you really want to optimize IGF-1, take it in the morning, 15 minutes before you've ate anything, directly in the morning, empty stomach. Two, take it before your workout, and three, right before bedtime. If you could do that and you can, you know, you can split the dosages between that where you can get a good good dose on all three, then you're going you're gonna to have a great workout. You're going to have magnificent pumps that you've never had before, for sure, 100%. 100% on that. That, that, well, that really seems like going. That's something we do that right like before going to Olympia Yeah, that no seems brainer. like a no-brainer then. It's like one of those things that you guys would get on the phone right now and, and, and give a call over there. Just go, hey, let's rock and roll with the IGF-1 and the Hercules potion yep. uh, and, yep. and try that out. And again, you were saying it's recommended for you or, or your belief is stay on it for like two months and then get off. Yeah, yeah. yeah I would get off it for – I would go on 60 days, 90 days tops. And then at that point, give yourself at least a month. Two weeks, they say, to desensitize. I'd like to say about a month. Um, and at that point, we'll figure out something you're going to go on. Because usually what we would do is, is like if somebody's on IGF-1 and they want to continue on with something to help, then they'd usually go on CJC-1295 with Iperolin in that next 30 days and then go back onto the growth or as far as IGF-1 the um, therapy. But at that point, we can go. At, I'm going to look into Semarolin again. So at least they have some sort of option. Um, that's the original GHRH compounds, a growth hormone releasing hormone peptide compound. It's the original one out there. Um, but it will work, you know, it just it doesn't have extended half-life like CJC had. So we'll have to, you'll have to put that with something different, maybe glycine or something like that to really help patients give them the big benefit. Go for it. What about, uh, what about, uh, MK677? How does that play into all this? MK677. Now that's, is that something, it's a little different than a peptide, right? Go for it. Peptide. So, it's on schedule two. It is a peptide. Originally um, on the internet. Is that a lot on of the list as well? That is Ibuta on the Morton. list. Yeah, it's Ibutamortin. Yeah, so you're lucky. So at that point, so Ibutamortin or MK677 originally was classified by people on the internet as a song. That was wrong. Um, it is a peptide therapy. It's a GHRH peptide. It's the only oral GHRH peptide that works. And that one is on schedule two band list too, as well. So I'd get it while you can. That, that I definitely so, get it. You know. Okay. So. Okay. So that, that's another one that's uh, on that list again. And we could, could we, is there a place where they could go see this uh, band list? I imagine it's sure. on the FDA. Sure. If you, if you just want to search up FDA band peptides, it'll take you right to the FDA gov and it'll have all schedules. So you can look at and read for yourself, which ones are on there, which ones are currently looking at um, and which ones are to totally completely banned. So like I said, that list I looked at, I was like, man, this is just crazy that, you know, every single one on there, right. And not just a couple, but every single one. And then at that point, the reasoning of why it's on there is the exact same for every single peptide. I just don't understand that at all. I mean, it just didn't say safety concern. It literally said like immunosuppressant on every single one. And I'm just like, I've been taking peptides for over eight, nine years. Uh, my immune system is stronger now than it's ever been. Uh, and I take a multitude of different therapies and peptides. I think I take like at least five to six a day. So, you know, I'm talking right, right now, BPC 157, TB 500. I don't know how I'm going to get by with my shoulders because I literally use that almost every day. Um, at that point I, I take in, um, GHKCU, I've been taking that thymol for the immune system. I've been taking that, um, IGF-1, I've been taking that. I mean, so there's a good amount of different things I've been taking as far as that goes. And then I was going to introduce new peptides to people, C-Max, C-Link, Dihexa. So C-Max right there. I mean, that one is, is awesome as far as sleep, mental cognitive function, c lang same thing, nootropic. I mean, it's some of these different things out there would definitely help people in a lot of different ways, not just physically, but mentally too as well. So it just sucks that they're going to try to do all this stuff. 
Um, someone asked here, can you take the TRT uh, with the Hercules potion? I'm assuming so. Sure. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So Hercules potion can take with any therapy that we have. Um, Titan complete the same way in all those. Usually with TRT, like you can take pretty much any therapy as long as, as, as that we have on TRT. Um, you know, contradictions, maybe medical history on ECAs. If you've had heart problems or stuff like that, you know, that's where the, those go into play. But majority of the therapies you can stack together and be able to utilize together to accomplish different things or improve on areas that you want to improve on. Wow. This is, again, I think jumping back just for a second, it, it's interesting that uh, we haven't heard a lot about this, except the only person I've heard this from is from Titan Medical and the clinic itself uh, sending me a message. And so it's interesting for everybody out there that is working um, or thinking about peptides. Again, I would get a hold of Titan Medical and talk to them further than just uh, what you're seeing here today. What kind of questions you got for us, Jeffrey? A lot of people are also curious about diets. They love watching you every day, and they love if you guys talk a little bit about your diet, carbs, or keto, or whatnot. Johnny, go for it. I know that your diet is really clean right now, especially because you're about four weeks away from the Olympia, yeah. Um, yeah. making yeah. the appearance that Titan Medical will be there. They have a booth um, and, and the great team there. Go for it. How are you coming yeah. into this, and what's your diet right Okay, uh, so diet. So um, right now, I'm uh, kind of like on a carnivore diet, low carb diet as far as that goes. Um, right now, you know, obviously I eat steak, you know, in the morning and night. That's my meals. Um, I eat 24 ounces of steak in the morning by itself, no carbs, and then 24 ounces at night, and I'll add a little bit of rice, maybe a quarter of a cup. Right now, just real low. And in the middle of the day, which my lunch, I've been eating. Um, we need a new place down here. People, you know, oh, you can't find something that's, that's healthy out. So I've been eating at this place called Protein House, which they have a million locations across the country. Yes, they and, do. Uh, yeah, the owner, you know, is the owner of franchise here. It's right down the street that just opened up for us in Titan. And, you know, I, I just get the regular chicken and, and rice. And I get two of those big bowls, and I'm, I'm eating those. So I'm eating probably about eight ounces to ten ounces of chicken, maybe a little bit more here or there. And then probably about another cup maybe a cup and a half of rice at lunchtime. So I'm trying to carve up a little bit more before my workouts in the afternoon. And then at night, just go home and, and try to keep it clean as possible. I mean, that's what I'm doing. I mean, here or there, you know, like I said, I might have a cinnamon roll in between. Um, but, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm not cheating like crazy. You know? I, I never have and I never usually do. So, you know, those are more of like a treat for me, like on a Saturday or Sunday. I've done good all week. All right, cool. I get my one cinnamon roll. I'm good to go. Yeah, my diet sounds pretty much similar to yours. Um, get ready for the next movie. So I'm slicing and dicing. I'm in that phase. And I'm also going to be at the uh, Olympia at the booth at Titan yeah. Medical. Uh, both oh, me yeah. and Mona will be there. So I'm hoping yeah. if anybody is in Florida coming to the Olympia, please swing by, say hello, chat. Um, we'll be oh, there yeah. just answering questions, taking photos, acting silly, trying to teach some, uh, pick up some dance moves from Johnny. That, that's the oh yeah, it's gonna be fun. Movie. It's gonna be fun. We got uh, we're gonna have three different locations at Olympia this year. We'll have our main booth, three different 20 by twenty. Go. Yeah, so we got a twenty by twenty booth, which will be the main booth, right? And then we have another location, a ten by twenty booth in the Olympia Pavilion, which will have the Lamborghini Aventador and a bikini type model there, taking pictures with people, sign them up. And then we have a ten by ten in the Anti Aging Pavilion. Um, which we'll be having, um, I think, like a 30- or 40-minute um, talk with people that are there on stage. So it's going to be really good, be interesting, be able to talk about Titan Medical Center, how we can benefit people, some of the different things that people should be watching out for, how they get healthy. Um, so I'd you know, love to have you there, too, as well with us on that. And uh, I think that, that'll be it. So there, we're going to have a lot of Titans there in three different locations. Wow. So we're going to be we're gonna be Titan Takeover, baby, all the way through and through. I love this. This is going to be an epic epic adventure um and fun uh for us oh, to be yeah. the, like the first titan appearance for us so we're excited about being there with the team we know wait. we know a lot of the team members and they're incredible what's the hercules can you um kind of go into the hercules yeah. potion and some other treatments you have at the titan medical because the hercules sure. potion is not the only one you have Sure. So Hercules Potion, um, so we have our own signature blends of amino acid and vitamin therapies. 
Um, when I started Titan Medical Center, you know, I, I seen in the beginning, one, everybody's going to be doing this, right? I seen how much benefit and so many people out there that needed hormone replacement therapy and they didn't even know about it. But I, you know, I, was, I said, once this starts catching on, everybody's going to be doing this. So I said, what, what can I differentiate ourselves? Well, that was injectable vitamin amino acids. I don't know how many you know, times before I own Titan, I'd go into a vitamin, bo- or vitamin store or GNC or whatever it is, buy three or $400 worth of supplementation. I have no idea if it's working, not working, fillers, whatever. Um, so I made these blends. And Hercules Potion is one of them. So Hercules Potion has nine different components. Glutamine, arginine, ornithine, lysine, alcitrulline, proline, taurine, NAC, and L-carnitine. Great for so many different things. It packs a lot of punch and a lot of benefits with one little injectable with an insulin syringe. You can uh, inject this in the muscle you're training for instant gratification of that muscle. I'm talking about pump within two sets. And it stays for at least four to six hours, not 15 minutes, and then you're out of the gym and the pump goes bye-bye. And then that's the instant gratification. So everybody wants to know, what's it going to do for me right now? Because that's what they care about. But then in the back end of things, you have glutamine, which is great for recovery. It's in every supplementation for recovery. It's amino acid. And then you have lysine, which is building the immune system, supporting the immune system. Because when we're lifting or doing any strenuous activity, we're putting strain on the body. That's putting strain on the immune system too as well. So you want to back that up. Um, you got ornithine in there. It's an anti-fatigue amino. So there should be able to do more strenuous activity, whatever it is, whether it's riding a bike, climbing a mountain, uh, training in a gym, running a marathon, walking around Disney all day, right? Or even sexually. So, you know, we're talking about more endurance and stamina in the bedroom. This will definitely help with that. Plus with the arginine L-citrulline, the vasodilators, that pump factor creates more blood flow throughout the body. So you will have better sexual performance too with this. Just with that alone. And then you talk about proline, a collagen-based amino acid, and L-carnitine with so many different benefits there for muscle building, blood flow. Um, and then um, trying to think what else is taurine. So brain function, anti-cramping. So that's Hercules Potion. That's just one therapy that has all these different things in it. And then we talk about Titan Complete, Titan Ultra. I mean, we can really get into a whole bunch of different things, which, uh, I mean, it'll make your head spin. But we can get, we can get into them. Just let me know if you guys really want to talk about them. But it's great just for those guys that are getting up there in age that want to get back and want to get healthy. Maybe they're not for functioning sure. well in the bedroom. It's like, well, the first thing is maybe we're getting their T levels back to where they should be. So yep. you got that going for you. So you're burning more fat. You're retaining that muscle. Maybe getting some of that memory muscle even back from your younger years. Absolutely. Add in the Hercules potion on top of that. Yep. Now you're recovering mm-hmm. better. You got more blood flow. This is just like – yep. You're changing it. You're changing it for them and giving them hope again, which I think is the the great thing about the Titan Medical Clinic. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, these things are very beneficial, even for somebody that's 21 years old. So, I mean, that was a big thing when I thought about it. I'm like, listen, 21-year-olds usually don't need hormone replacement therapy, right? Unless they've abused some sort of anabolic or energy in the past or they have really, really bad genetics or environmental issues which have affected their body. Um, so they need something maybe for a performance enhancer. The other good thing is, is that this can go to pro athletes. So I have a lot of pro athletes that are patients and on pro athletes. I've never crossed that line of giving them banned substances. One, because I don't want them getting in trouble. And two, I don't want the media coming after me and saying, well, he's in this, this issue, like, you know, with this yeah. player and this league and, and my name's on the press and I don't want it even. Good press, bad press is usually good for business, but I still don't want to be impressed for bad, bad press. And I don't want to do anything wrong. So this is something that a professional athlete can take and not have to worry about coming hot on a PD test and still get some sort of performance enhancement from it. Um, I've had a, a number of different athletes use this from, you know, from runners to baseball players, basketball, football, uh, rugby players, you know, so you name it. I've, I've dealt with pretty much every perfect golfers. Golfers are big on NAD because it's a big concentration game, a mental game. So those guys really like to take the NAD to get really laser focused on what's going on. Um, so there's, there's a couple of different things that people can utilize right now that they can give them great performance enhancement and not affect hormones and be totally healthy for them and be beneficial for them too as well. So is, is this right for anybody and everybody that's out there watching this? Well, I think the great thing about that is that when you do use that number and give a call over to Titan Medical, they can talk to you about what is best for you. And it's by going through the process, get some blood work done if you need to do that, and then have that discussion with them to see what is beneficial and things that we did not even cover today. There's there's a plethora of things that 
you guys have over there to help Oof. these people get incredibly healthy and the best sure. lives that they can possibly do. And at the end of the day, again, Titan Medical is about quality of life, quality, right. the that's best right. life you can have and live. And that's the ultimate goal here. And I know that that's what you and me from the second we talked, uh, you know, um, it was the quality. It's all about the quality, the Absolutely. best way you can do it. Um, any final questions for Big Johnny here? And we and for everybody that's here, we got the TikTok going. We got the, I got my Snapchat going. I got Instagram going. We got all these questions it's here. Going good too. If we don't answer your questions today, make sure to give that number right there a call and talk to them and let them know Titan sent you over to Titan Medical. How's that? How that's does that right. work? <laughs> that's right. What's the number? And you get this kind of blood work if you call directly after the show or during the show. Uh, is there a peptide to make you? I'll tell you what. It's not a peptide. <laughs> but if you take finasteride for, for so long, yeah, you forget about yeah. the woman, you forget about what they want to give you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but then maybe you forget why you're making that money. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, you're investing somewhere else, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Wow. That's a good point, though. Like I said, there's something for everybody. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, hi, Mike. What's your opinion on developing a career? And would you encourage someone to take the entrepreneurial route? Thanks, Tidy. Oh, I think both me and Johnny could yeah. say 100% to this. And I think I, we can agree on this is that uh, doing a job is stressful. You know, that eight hours a day, nine hours a day, that is stressful chasing a dream and creating a career you'll spend 14 15 hours a day and it will be fun because you're chasing something yeah. so much more meaningful for yourself so yeah i think i think always do that over uh the employment go for it johnny no, I, I i agree with you listen um you know going to a job is kind of easy because you go to the job and you do your job you you know you check out and you're on your way home and you don't have to worry about anything else going on so it is a little bit easier in that sense, but you don't reap all the rewards and you might not be doing something that makes you happy. And that goes a long way. Um, you know, I, I made a lot of money before Titan and, and jobs and was unhappy. And at that point, like, I didn't want to do it. I don't care. I don't care about the money. It is what it is. But when I got into this and I started doing what I loved, I mean, every day is not work for me. I wake up and I do what I love. Luckily that pays the bills and the livelihood came out of it. But that was a lot of sacrifice too as well. If you're going to go down the entrepreneurial route, I definitely recommend it for everybody to do. You know, some people say out there, people aren't, aren't, people aren't meant to be entrepreneurs and some people are and some people aren't. I don't believe that. I believe that, you know, if you have the drive, you believe in yourself and uh, you stay the course, then you'll be successful in what you want to do. But um, you got to be smart and you, you got to have the drive. You can't be somebody that's unmotivated. And you can't be somebody that's not self-motivated too as well because if you're not self-motivated, you're not going to accomplish very much because everybody's going to tell you it's not going to work. If, if, if everybody followed that and somebody has told them in the, you know, in their past that this is not going to work. I'm sure people told that to, to Bill Gates or whoever the hell it was. And they're like, this is just, this is out of the realm and look what they've done. Right. Yeah. And it, it, you know, people said like, you know, certain people like you're not, you're never going to be an actor. And these guys are superstars now. Right. Or you're never going to be a baseball player. And these guys are all stars. So, I mean, if you go by what people tell you all the time, you're never going to amount to nothing because that's what they believe in you. But if you believe in yourself and you actually show them, that's a whole different story. When I started Titan, everybody told us we were going to fail. This was never going to work. I mean, I heard this from doctors. I heard this from my parents, her parents, uh, friends, just everybody around me. Like, what are you guys doing? Like, you guys are either going to go to jail. <laughs> I, can't, I can't I'm fathom like, what. Yeah, we're going to do an HRT company, TRT company. What? <laughs> They're like <laughs> testosterone injections. Nobody's going to inject yeah. themselves. Testosterone, that's for steroid users and, and, and bodybuilders. Like, you're going to kill people. I'm like, nah. now look. And now everybody's like, oh my God. Like, it, that's what happens though. When you're on the bottom and you're nobody, it's hard for people to believe in you. You got to earn that. So at that point, you got to just, you got to fight more than ever. I, I know you know how it is too. 
I mean, you're sacrificing everything. Like in the beginning, sacrifice time with your kids, sacrifice time at home, sacrifice time with friends, family, whatever it is, because this is the goal and we need to accomplish this goal. And everything outside of it is, is nothing to me. I mean, if you're not, you got to be tunnel vision, man. You got to be laser focused. But um, it's not as easy as people think. It's a lot easier, I think, now than it ever was to be an entrepreneur and to be able to make different streams of revenue with online and everything like that. This wasn't yeah. before. Like when my dad owned his business back in the day, like there was no internet. There was no, you know what I'm saying? There was yellow pages and that was it. Yeah. There was no direct mail. There was nothing like So it was hard to get out. Now, you, I mean, you can literally, you know, go on TikTok, start your TikTok page for free and start acquiring customers, whatever your business is, Facebook, Instagram, same way. Um, you can go face to face to people and start building up, but, uh, you, you know, it's never going to stop, you know? So at that point, um, you know, if you're going to get into it, make sure you have a passion for it too. It's not, it's not all about the money. If it's just all about the money. The, the passion's not going to be there and your commitment to it might not be as good. It's not going to come quick enough to where that money or fame kind of makes you happy. It's going to be a struggle. You know, the, the thing about it was like, even when we started, we never thought we were going to be at this point. We never thought yeah. we were going to go as quick as we did. It was about doing the right thing, patient by patient. And at that point, like the success, yeah, that that is a byproduct of doing the right thing and, and, and being committed to what we were doing. So, you know, I'm glad we did. You know, it was easier, like I said, to have Sharice by my side doing it. But, you know, at that point, like you, you got you to gotta believe in yourself and you're going to have to go out on a limb one time. It is what it is. But I would be, I would say to people that are going to do it to make safe, educated decisions. I'm not a gambler. I don't gamble in Vegas. I don't like gamble unless it's a sure thing. And that's either if I can turn it my way or I got it and I know it's going to be my way. But if I don't know it's going to be my way and I have to make a decision, I want to make an educated decision what I want to do. So you need to start lining some different things up. How much it's going to cost you to do this and, and you know, what you're going to pay yourself. And like, you know, you got to start structuring some things out in the beginning. Um, it's not going to be all structured out and you can adapt, but you need to start laying some groundwork of what you're going to do. Plan A, B, C, D, and start making it down that list one by one. There you go. There you go. That is uh, some great info from Johnny. And uh, again, I, I guess for me too is, uh, you know, 1987 was the first time in the magazines and now we're 36 years later and I'm going to my movie premiere tonight, Red Carpet. And so it's That's been a awesome. journey. It's been a long time. I didn't think that three and a half decades later, I'd be in a star in a movie that's uh, being released at, uh, you know, worldwide. So this is, this is great. But if you got that passion, like Johnny was saying, you can dig in in three and a half decades. You, you got no problems with the ups and downs. And that being said too, the ups and downs, we come back to uh, the peptides, make sure to give a call over and you get a discount on blood work right now. If you kind of call up right after this show and just say, Hey, the Titan sent you over there and then get your orders in for your peptides and load up a bit um, so you have stuff because um, you Definitely. don't know what's going to happen later on. And again, for everybody that's going through those injuries, I see so many doctors have recommended the BPC for you. And so get over there, take some, uh, enjoy, yep, and do that. Johnny, as always, thank you, brother. Appreciate you, bro. Always, man. Thank you. Thank you. It's been an awesome Titan Talk Tuesday with you. I'll send some pics from the red carpet tonight, some videos. Definitely. Definitely. I'm so, <laughs> super excited, man. I'm excited for you. I can't wait. You're going to be looking Might dazzling on the that top. red carpet, man. A little pop in the top <laughs> on the red carpet. Show them what's going on. Man, much love again. <laughs> Thank you for everything, and, and we'll talk soon. I'll talk to you later, right, bro. Have a good one. Bye, guys. Bye.